of the newest members of the BYU soccer team, Junior Latte, has just begun his career here. But how he got here began with his father in Ghana over 30 years ago. I grew up along the coastal part of Ghana in Greater Accra. At the age of 17, I became very interested in religion, and I have many questions that I can't get answers for. One day, one of Emmanuel's classmates, Carl, shared his beliefs, saying that God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost are three separate individuals. And it seems like for a moment, the green light just turned on in my head. So after that meeting, I went to Carl and said, how in the world did you know this? Then he said, um, I read the Book of Mormon. I said, what in the world is the Book of Mormon? Then he told me about the Book of Mormon, and I decided I've got to check this out. They formed a youth group studying from the three LDS books that Carl had, the Book of Mormon, Gospel Principles, and A Marvelous Work and a Wonder. Well, I got to a point I decided, you know, I need to contact this church and have them send missionaries. He and many others in Ghana sent letters to the church asking for missionaries. Months later, the church sent one of its leaders to organize a branch in Accra, and he was there to witness it. I was among uh, the few young men who joined the church in Accra. Today, it's got several stakes in a temple, an MTC, and a genealogy center. <laughs> It is a marvelous work and wonder. Emmanuel then served in the California Arcadia Mission in 1983 and 84. It was an English-speaking mission, but for me it was a foreign mission. It was an exciting experience. He went to Ricks College in Idaho and played soccer there before transferring to BYU and playing on the team here. But as soon as I got into the accounting program, <laughs> I had to put soccer on, on the back burner. He coached soccer to some of his daughters and eventually his son, Junior. He's got a great passion for, the so for soccer. Uh, the thing that uh, I'm thrilled about is he's playing a lot better than I was at his age. And that's what I hope for, that he'll be better than I, I was. Junior played, but wasn't really into it that much in the beginning. My sisters all played, so I kind of followed in their footsteps and played after them. And I think that was like a big influence that really kept me going. Every now and then I was like, I don't want to go to practice. I don't want to go to the game. But I think when I was 13, 14, starting to get older, I was like, yeah, you know, it, kind of kicked in. The University of North Carolina is well known for its soccer program and it was after Junior attended soccer camp there when the coach started following him. And then I got a call like October-ish from the coach and so like it was a long spread that I didn't hear from him but October he called and he was like I want you to come play. The coach had a question about Junior's faith and then said something that Junior will never forget. He said I remember you're a Mormon and I was like yeah and I don't I kind of like that could be good that could be bad. And he's like, he's like, well, I hear like there's this mission thing. And I was like, yeah, there's a mission two years. And he's like, well, if you come to the University of North Carolina, you won't be able to go. And I was like, whoa, like that's kind of a big shutdown. Junior told the coach that serving a mission was top priority, but the coach kept pressing him. He said like, if you, if you stay here, then you're gonna go somewhere in life. He's like, there's pro teams that like come to practices just to watch them play, cause they're just that good. North Carolina was Junior's first choice, so he turned to the scriptures and prayer and his father's example of faith and testimony that he had witnessed throughout his life. You try to teach your kids the right things, but the, the final analysis is the, is the element that we cannot control, is their choice. They have to make a decision. Junior made a decision. He sacrificed the offer and chose what he felt was right. I think he was kind of like, whoa, like, that's a big de decision, and he just like, he was like, okay, hey, good luck in life, and I was like, thanks, and then like, he was like, you're crazy, and that's kind of, that's, that just ended it, you're crazy, and then it, the phone call ended, and it was intense, but I know I made the right choice, so. Do you think you're crazy? <laughs> no, I do not think I'm crazy. Chris Watkins is excited about Junior, his talent, and the upcoming season. I think the thing I like the most is that he's such a great defender. He's a ball winner to the nth degree, and he's a very popular player. People know who he is, um, and so everywhere I go, everybody's telling me how it's so great that we picked him up and that he's super excited to be coming, and so it's becoming a great thing, and it's actually kind of, it's amazing where I'm hearing people finding out that we've got him committed, and you know, it's been in the newspapers a little bit, but not a ton, but in the soccer community, it seems to be very well known that he's, he's decided to come here, and uh, certainly we're excited too. Watkins gave Junior a recent DVD showing the team going to Mexico for their preseason and how they also all gave talks and taught lessons in church. Being able to do that and grow your testimony and everyone else is down there, it's just a big experience and I think going through that, it'll just bring more confirmation through life of I know what I'm doing and I know that it's right. 
So I, I'm just excited to be with the guys. I, I know they're good people. It's going to be fun. In Provo, Aaron Nilsson, True Blue.